Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are back in Minnesota. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say back in Minnesota, you should click up here in one of the corners to go watch my original Minnesota vlog episode where I came out here to see Carson and his brother Colton with Shiftsky Companies. Uh, we are back out here. So we did a basement dig with them last time. It was November, it was cold as shit. Uh, today, it's summertime, so it's pleasant outside. And we are on a big project, big for these guys. So basically we've got a sub here that these guys are developing. And yeah, that ain't no rookie operation here. This is about a 30 acre site. It goes back into the woods back there, kind of cuts around, and then there's another, I think, three additional or four additional home sites back there. And so these guys are getting ready to do all the storm pipe on this project, and they've never done storm before, which if you guys are familiar with the industry, you'll know storm isn't something you just kind of fumble your way through. So I said, how about I come spend some time with you guys, and I'll help you out. So I'm here for two and a half weeks, and we're going to start with the land balance here. Um, because we don't have all our materials on site. We're still waiting for some pipe. We're still waiting for some of the materials to move the pipe, believe it or not. So chokers and pipe chains should be here this afternoon. So we'll get that all squared away. So in the meantime, we're gonna start doing some land balancing. So we've got Colton, which is Carson's brother. He's in the uh, D6K2 and he's gonna be pushing. Basically, we've got a stockpile that's gonna happen right on the backside of the, of the Doosan hoe there. I will be jumping in the Doosan here in just a second and I'm gonna start throwing material. And that will be how we spend our day today, kind of balancing this out because we do have, I believe there are two runs of pipe going through here. Or actually, I take that back, they're up there. And then we have a run of pipe and a structure going in somewhere here. And that will dip off back into those trees back over there. And then we'll just slowly work our way back into the sub. So that's the plan. So with all that being said, well, you guys already know the line because you've seen this enough. We'll catch you in the machine. All right, guys, we are officially back in a hoe. That's what she said. <laughs> so Carson's got a 30-ton Doosan on this job. That's pretty cool. So we're going to have to bump that track speed up. Come on now, baby. There we go. There we go. And we're going to have to adjust this seat because that ain't going to work. But we'll get to the top of the hill first. Hmm. Well, it is what it is. All right. So the goal here. Okay, there's my thumb controls. All right, all right. Every time you get a new machine, you got to familiarize yourself. So the goal here is I'm going to kind of rough out this cut for Colton, who's got GPS on his machine. So I'm just going to bulk material and throw it behind me. Now, I will say this is significantly slower than that little 140. Taylor had. We'll get her warmed up before we pass judgment. And Carson's got a nice big old sand bucket on this machine. And this is totally kind of, we're just bulking material. So the key here when you're working in an operation like this is you don't want to go too deep because we need the road and everything obviously to be virgin soil when Colton comes through with the dozer and trims off the last little bit. So, we're going to stay high, and if we need to come back and make a second run at this when he comes over with GPS, so be it. We just don't want to go deep. So I've talked to Carson a couple times this morning. He should be out a little later with some pipe chains, chokers, the rest of the supplies we need to start doing pipe. And then the engineering firm is supposed to be out here to stake for us sometime late this morning and I told him we're just going to have him stake the whole site and we will work around all of the stakes with our balancing like you would on a normal project. Yeah, this hoe is significantly slower but at the same time this is a you know 25 ton 30 ton machine. I don't remember what the model is on this guy. Wasn't really paying attention when I jumped in the cab so I would expect it to be a little slower. I believe this is Doosan's equivalent to like a Cat 330, I believe.
I gotta be honest, I've never dug with a sand bucket. It's kind of interesting. This clay kind of hangs, 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 and then all of a sudden the whole bucket drops out. Yeah, you can see how everything just hangs up in there until it's totally vertical and then the whole bucket worth of material drops out. It's kind of kind of weird. This is always the fun part about a new machine, trying to figure out where everything's at and what everything does. Oh well. Anyway, back to work guys. Quit distracting me. try to change the work mode because I'm not I'm not too impressed with the 30 tonner maybe we're not going to change the work mode I can't remember in the deuce on how you can change the power mode there we go power that would probably be it huh now how do you change it oh power power we have ultimate power now yeah okay that's better sweet Jesus we were in economy mode guys my lord no wonder she was slow. Okay. At some point, let's we'll bolt this out first, and then we'll move over there and start dressing, messing and dressing that. All right. All right. So that's helpful. Now I have an idea of where we're at and where we need to be. And if you're wondering why I'm swinging this way, it's so I don't slam into Colton. Colton can actually start working towards pushing that pile behind me, and uh, he didn't have to work around my my arm we'll see how the day goes I may switch to that tooth bucket so I don't know if you guys were able to hear him it occurs to me because I'm wearing a lav mic basically uh, the middle of the road here that I'm cutting still has to go down about two and a half to three feet from where I'm cutting currently from that little flat patch he made with the dozer so I'm going to um, I'm gonna continue cutting at this level for now and then we'll go back and just take another lift uh, as opposed to trying to hog it all out now. And then the other thing we were talking about is he does have a tooth bucket at the back of the sub that we may switch out later today. I don't know. I'm not in a huge rush because this is cutting through this clay all right. But he said it is it is a smaller capacity bucket than the one I'm currently using. And I don't necessarily want to give up the capacity for slightly better cutting power. You know, if this thing were really struggling to get through the material, that'd be one thing, but uh, I'm, I'm getting decent penetration here, so I'm not necessarily willing to give up the capacity. I tell you, it is nice to be in a real man's hoe again. I was getting tired of running that piddly bobcat excavator. So the other thing we were discussing is uh, if you can see the stakes out here with the red ribbons on them, that's kind of a fill area. So we are going to have to fill a little bit, but you can see the cut that we've got here. I think we got plenty of material on that side to fill. So everything on this other side that I'm currently working, I'm going to continue throwing this way. And, uh, and that way we're not, you know, the key is don't double touch everything because that's when you start losing production. And so I don't want to have a bunch of material thrown out that way to figure out we've got too much and then we've got to throw it all back this way again. So that's, that's what we were discussing. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to keep it this and uh, I've got a time lapse set up so you guys can kind of see our progress. And then I'll catch you guys here in a little bit when we have another exciting and interesting update to our day. So we'll catch you guys here in a little bit.
All right, guys, so it's noon. We just wrapped up lunch. It's actually a little past noon, but we just wrapped up lunch. Carson just swung out. We did a quick walk of the job to kind of game plan the, game plan the rest of the day here. So I'm going to take a little time outside the cab because we got two operators here so I can get some sweet, awesome cinematic shots of the dozer and the hoe working side by side. Um, and then I'm gonna jump on that little roller right there, that sheep's foot. Uh, and I'm going to, well, so let's back up. So the game plan is, um, hang on. I gotta think about this because I've switched my mics around because my other mic is in the cab of the excavator. So basically, let me walk you over here. We'll show you what we've got. So we have been working for a couple hours here. We've got the road bed. This is subgrade. So this is gonna be your clay grade on the road. We've got that down basically. It's still about three to four inches higher than it needs to be. Um, but we've got that cut down and then we've basically got that side over here cut down to relatively close to where it needs to be. So that has left us with that chunk over there. This still needs to be cut down so that this area will drain in the off chance we get rain. They're calling for maybe the possibility of rain tomorrow. So we wanna get this all cut down so that, that will drain and shed water so that we don't have a big mud hole. So that's what they're gonna work on. And then what's gonna happen here is we're gonna take this side that I'm standing on, we're gonna cut it down by a couple feet to get it to where it needs to be. And that's all gonna get pushed off that hill there. So let me darken you up a little bit. There you are. So that's gonna get pushed down that hill there uh, because that is a fill that's going to need to happen. Let me brighten you back up. There we are. So that is the plan. But in order for us to do a fill, as you guys know, or you should know if you watch my channel, um, we have to strip the organics off of it. So that's what I'm gonna use my little sheep's foot for with its handy dandy little blade. I'm gonna come out here and I'm basically gonna shave this whole hill and push all of the organics down to the bottom and out of the way. So let me show you that. So all of this is gonna go down the hill. The stakes are meaningless. Uh, basically that was just kind of, they were walking around trying to figure out where the fill started and where it was gonna blend into the hill. We don't need those stakes, we're gonna blow them right out. So that's kind of where we're at. So they're gonna fire up, they're gonna get to pushing and bailing, I'm gonna get to filming. And then I'm gonna jump on that sheep's foot and away we go. We'll catch you in a little bit.